so much, Rick. It's nice to meet you virtually. <laughs> yes, exactly. So you too as well. Uh, and uh, a pleasure to be here. The interesting yeah. topic about, I, I think it's a universal lament or close to. Uh, mm -hmm. There's stuff that we all can do quickly and easily and other things that are uh, difficult to get going on get, and difficult yeah. to, to stick with. So Absolutely. So we, we're going to talk about this for about 30 minutes or so, because we, okay. we all know our attention span can, can only <laughs> handle so much. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so one of the things that, that brought me to you was um, looking at your posts recently. You were working on this project, and I hope I used the right vocabulary for it, was around th these models that you've created, these little cities or towns with, with a gas station and so forth. And they're just miniature tiny things. Things. Yeah, and as as I was looking at that, I was like interested on. Well, the concept is super cool. I would want to create one, but then when I look at the details you've put with the with the pavements, with the paintings, I'm like, oh, that's too much detail. This is where my drop off point would be, and I wouldn't finish it. So, can you tell us what motivates you to get something like that started? So, so um, uh, I have a gigantic model railroad. I've been working on it since I was 10 years old, probably on, I mean, on and off. Uh, it started and stopped and moved and got put into boxes and then taken out and expanded again and filled a basement and then got taken all apart again. Um, so for me, there was the fascination with trains, just playing with trains when I was whatever, 10 years old. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, uh, more recently, because I've developed the skill to build all these things, uh, and create such detail. Um, I was approached by a group that are building this gigantic model of basically all the highlights of Canada. And it was inspired by a railroad that's in Hamburg where it's, I don't know, 50,000 square feet of Switzerland, Germany, and they have a working airport with planes landing, and trains everywhere and so on. So they're doing something similar here. And in fact, they're popping up all over the world now, inspired by this one German railroad called the uh, Miniature Wonderland in Hamburg. It's, it's stunning, it's stunning. So I was approached, could I build stuff for them, um, structures and so on, which is what I really do well. And I said, sure. And cool. so it's, um, you know, when I was 10, I thought, boy, I'd love to get paid to make, play with trains. And, oh. now, <laughs> and now I am. Uh, so, and then a museum, a uh, local railroad museum, not that local, but uh, about an hour away, uh, contacted me as well saying we're wanting to build a model of what the roundhouse used to look like in the back in the 50s with the steam engines. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking that on as well. And now with the pandemic, I think both projects are very much on uh, uh, the back burner or slowed down. So I haven't sure. heard anything. But so, so their question after all that, the question you're asking is, um, how do I stick with this? It's not hard for me. It's interesting to me. So that's mm. it's a passion, right? I, I mean, I was 10. I loved trains. And they were, you know, when you're little, they're even bigger as they go by. Um, yeah, yeah. So for other people, it's science fiction or it's Star Wars or it's uh, cooking or it's whatever your passion is, not hard to get motivated. That's not the problem for me. The problem mm -hmm. is that I'll be doing that when I should be writing, when I should be doing something mm. else that doesn't interest me. And that's I think the challenge that everybody has when we're not interested, um, yes. what, you know, you see high powered entrepreneurs when the conversation switches for something that's sort of more, anyway, how are you been? How's, how's the family? And so on. They're just like gone, you know, it's like, yes. it's, it's not Can't intense. Do small talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, the, there's two things you want to talk about. One is uh, getting started and then the other is continuing and actually finishing. Yeah, and the finishing part for sure. So the getting started, um, you know, I've done a number of videos on this uh, and um, the second PBS special that we did called uh, ADD and Mastering It has a number of suggestions. But one of the things that I emphasize always is to cl get clear what is stopping you from starting. And that, mm -hmm. it, and so it may be that it's not relevant anymore. You know, like I'm going to do a tour guide of, of New York City. Well, nobody can travel to New York City right now. So it's probably, there's no rush. Um, or you've discovered there's a way better site or there's 300 other sites that are 
promoting New York. So um, it's, or it may just be from the beginning, it's not been something interesting. Um, and then it may be also that it's just overwhelming. You don't know how to do it. I want to do a blog about New York City, living yeah. in New York City. Well, I don't know how to do a blog. I don't know what the internet baffles me. Uh, you know, you and I are trying to connect mm -hmm. here. So, uh, and we don't, th we can uh, not consider the possibility that there are people who know and we can just ask. Uh, you know, there are people out there who will help us. There are, mm -hmm. there are websites that will teach you how to build a website and so on. Um, and then there's other things like maybe there's legal paperwork or tax paperwork and you're behind in that. And that's just, there's so much emotion around it. Uh, and again, you just never get to it. And life becomes, you're carrying this weight somewhere back here and life gets very difficult. And it's, you know, it's like trying to run with weights on. You've got this extra stuff and you know you need to get to it and you just can't imagine ever starting. And for those kind of things, there's, I have a bunch of suggestions or a number of suggestions. One, the first thing is to break it up into like, where do I need to start? And if you can't figure that out, like, what should I do first? The, uh, you know, my taxes from this year, I don't even know where the envelopes are. Okay, maybe I should start with the envelopes. Mm -hmm. And that, that I can do. And then if I run out of, I can't find any of the envelopes, I'll go and look at what are the other steps that might, would be involved thinking about it. What do I need to do? And just start somewhere. When you do start, the next step is to start small. I'm just yes. going to gather the paperwork. I'm just going to put this together. But that pile of having those things together and going, actually, I've answered three of these already. And, oh, and here's a number I can call about, you know, negotiating mm -hmm. my tax, whatever it would be. Um, and now that I think about it, my friend Susan's a bookkeeper. Maybe she can, and you start to move things forward. The other thing, too, is if it's something more creative, like, starting a blog starting say you want to write a blog on new york city i don't want glomming onto know, that it's okay <laughs> but that's the example but, um so well, you know you read other blogs you go these are great and they're witty and they're funny and uh, i was on a, a webinar last night and i talked about the book that i co-authored called uh, add stole my car keys this is a, the sample oh, i call. love that <laughs> yeah so but i said that went through 19 drafts 19 now when it, the first draft probably wasn't particularly publishable by the 10th draft it was pretty good and by mm -hmm. the 19th i was really happy with it um and now people have read it and said wow it's the best book I've ever written or it's great or i love awesome. it so, but it wasn't when we started and so um somebody uh, i know a lot of writers and a, a horror writer uh, i think it's horror writer or science fiction writer said uh, one of the things that's worked is to start badly. So I'm going to write the world's worst horror story. There's oh, no... that just reduces the pressure, doesn't it? It's totally. It's like, okay. Yeah. Uh, and you can just have fun with it. It may actually turn into a comedy or you may mm -hmm. get into it because, you know, in something like writing, you're re writing is really the rewriting and the rewriting and, and clarifying, especially if you're a, like me, a verbal processor who needs to mm -hmm. get it out to be able to see what I'm thinking, you know, to... So my, and my wife is not that way. My wife will mull it over. So mm -hmm. I can be throwing out one idea after another. And my wife is, is a, an implementer. So what she does is she goes, well, how would we do that? We're already too busy. Rather, and I'm on right. the next idea yes. and the next idea. And I don't do it often enough, but I'm learning to start the conversation with, this is just me brainstorming. Okay. And even then she'll, she can get hooked. It's because that's her strength, right? It's, to, it's immediately her mind goes. So she's able to switch that off. So starting badly, great advice. Um, with, um, and starting small. So if I have a, a blog to write, not about New York, about ADHD, what I'll do is just um, I'll start a document. I'll throw down the two or three ideas I have. And then I'll, and then mm -hmm. suddenly, oh, and there's another idea, another idea. And suddenly it's half written. I love that. And I so relate to that because with me, when I started my podcast and I hear a lot of people that, you know, podcast, podcast, I want to do this. Um, I went in with both feet, like head in the whole thing. And I didn't care that I didn't have the right microphone or the right technology. Um, my thing was, I just need to get the stuff that I'm learning out to the world. And however yeah. it sounds, people will forgive the the quality because if the 
uh, the quality of the content is okay and, and, and it's interesting, then who cares if, if there's a little bit of a hum in the background, right? And then slowly as I was going through my podcast, then I went into Toastmasters, learned how to, you know, be a little bit more presentable when I'm speaking and managing yeah. my hums and ahs. So that starting badly is such a huge uh, tip, I think, that entrepreneurs, professionals can totally, um, you know, take that to heart. I have a question for you. I guess, my... Sorry, I just yes, want to say, please. I also want to say, so it's, this isn't just projects and work. It's like a relationship. Yeah. Becoming a parent. Nobody knows what we're doing when we have a kid. You know, yeah. by the time we're 30, or by the time our kids are 30, we'd make great parents at that point because we've learned. But uh, everybody starts at ground zero and just works their way up. At, at, uh, so, yeah, you jump in. There's a great uh, message in Michelle Obama's book, um, and she, Becoming, and she talks, she says something to the effect of, I've met a lot of really powerful, important people, and they aren't any smarter than anyone yeah. else that you know and some of them these days are not are smarter at all it's, you know it's uh, um so i think that it's intimidating to see someone um you know who's gotten you know you, that's why watching the olympics is i in my mind watching the olympics is the best way to kill any hope you have of getting in shape because you're watching these <laughs> people do these things you just, i could never yeah. do that yeah you couldn't because you're 35, 50, yeah. 70, you know, but yeah. you could do and so on. So, yeah. So talk about that as it relates to emotions, because I think that's one of the things that people, that folks with ADHD get too caught up on is there are emotions around yeah. something and our feelings towards it. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I think our, our fears, a our fear of failure. And then I think it steps even farther back uh, and maybe I'm, bringing this up because I'm rereading the book for the third or fourth time, but The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem by Nathaniel Brandon. He talks about, um, he, in the first 20 pages, he shows how you could almost argue everything that's going on in the world today is really due to low self-esteem. The people who just need more stuff, who hoard, mm -hmm. or who can never have enough money, who yes. are, um, you know, they're violating my rights. The government's telling me I have to wear a mask. He's like, yeah. yeah. They're also telling you it's a 50 mile an hour speed limit here. You, you know, you can go as fast as you want, but there are consequences to you and your car and the people you may hit. Um, anyway, don't get me started. But um, self esteem, which we struggle with mm -hmm. um, because it's been so battered, because we've had so many examples of not being able to do things that are simple, that other people do quite easily. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so it's easy for us to have that low self-esteem. I thought I was an idiot. And, and after 700 episodes of radio and television, writing, acting, producing, all sorts of stuff, um, I still thought, I, geez, I, you know, they could hire someone cheaper. I, I better not ask for more money this season. Right. Because I, I thought, well, it's easy to write comedy. No, mm -hmm. it's not. It's easy mm -hmm. for me. So we forget what we do well. We dismiss it. And we can even look at it and go, yeah, but how are you going to make a living at that? Well, maybe you aren't. Uh, maybe you just end up doing local theater or doing stand. I don't know mm -hmm. what. But you might make a living at it. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, or you might ask that person out and they might say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you so it's, it's about jumping in and doing um, so our emotions, this negativity, this low self-esteem, you know, if, if you are, if you think you're not good enough, how hard are you going to try? Yeah. You're, you know, you're, you're hobbled from the beginning and belief is everything. And there's been so many studies done on this. And, um, you know, one of the examples it, that they're used now is rehearsing mentally. So you'll see athletes before they do the downhill slalom, they're mm -hmm. at the top and they're going like this and they're, or the bobsled team, the drivers are just, they're running the route ahead of time and they're visioning the salespeople who are successful vision, handshake, the thing, the sun, they see the signature. You have, that's all powerful stuff. It wires the brain to success. Athletes use this all the time, professional athletes at the highest level, they vision, yes. they vision, the vision, and it works. They did a study where they had people who had never played basketball 
they had them shoot baskets for 20 minutes. They told a third of them, practice every day for 20 minutes. They told a third of them, don't practice at all, we'll see you in a week or two weeks. And these third group, they said, sit in a chair, close your eyes and imagine shooting baskets. And in your mind, if it misks, correct, just keep, but just imagine it. Mm -hmm. So the how group, do you relate that hang to, on, I gotta, oh sorry, you hear go the difference here. Yeah, so yeah. the people who practiced got better, 25% better. The people who didn't practice got 0% better. Mm -hmm. The people who just sat in a chair but just pictured it going in and just pictured correcting and so on got 24% better. Wow. Wow. Not, not quite 25, mm -hmm. but holy smoke, or maybe it was 23. Whatever it was, it was shocking. So self-esteem is often the core of this. I can't do this. I can't. And, mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's a harder thing to work on than, than, uh, than just chunking things up. But I, I suggest you start looking at what you do, what you have done, and ask loved ones, what am I good at? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that you'll have sense. people tell people who say, are you kidding, Kathy? You're a great mom. You're just, a, yeah. and you're courageous. And I, you've mm -hmm. inspired, and you they went and did Toastmasters, and that's amazing. And mm -hmm. all these things that we, we're all frightened and scared and, and struggling and thinking we're not good enough. And that's the thing to overcome. So love that, love all of it. So I'm going to take us to perfectionism and when it comes <laughs> to doing projects and the start to the finish. And some of us fall, you know, uh, we don't follow through because we look at it and we're like, oh, it's not perfect enough or I didn't do it right. And, you know, there, there's, there's this, this background belief that sometimes we're told, um, well, make sure you're doing it properly and that noise comes in when we're in the yep. middle of doing a project. So that deters us from finishing things. So what is your opinion around perfectionism? Uh, well, I, th I think there's nothing wrong with wanting it to be better. You know, mm -hmm. 19. 19. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's right. And I could sit down now and cringe at stuff that's in here and go, oh, that could be better. I can look at stuff I wrote that went on national television thing. I, mm -hmm. you know, on uh, HBO or whatever that like these things I've done and I go yes oh you know what I should have said you know oh here's another gag I could I cut that line geez I could have said that in half the number of words and then people would think I'm twice as funny and like yes. I can uh, so there's there is no such what's the perfect child there you know what's the perfect beauty everybody's mm -hmm. got a different opinion and mm -hmm. uh and so there is no such thing as perfect there it there's great there's or and even great is you know depending on what you're interested in if you're interested in uh, uh topaz you could get really this is perfect well this one's even better and the rest of the people go it's a rock so your own definition of what something should be um that's the hardest thing and it's it's been for me is to it's good enough for now the way I've countered that is to work with other people. So I've, I've done writing on my own, lots of it, especially around ADHD. But when I was working on television regularly, I tried always uh, in doing comedy to be working with people because yeah, I'd write a first draft, send it off, it would come back and I could add and subtract and so on. And I was with a comedy troupe called The Frantics. There were four of us, kind of mm -hmm. Canada's answer to Monty Python. And we just... We, you'd br re bring in the script, read it, the skits, they were short, three, two, three, four, five minutes, read it. And then either somebody go, uh, nobody would say, eh, nobody said negative, but it was okay. Or can I, I've got an idea for that. And it went back and forth. And again, scripts that were three minutes long went through 12, 14 drafts through four writers, everybody adding a bit. And then you'd go in and go, no, they've taken it away and you could bring it back and so on. But it, it's, it's the dance, it's the mm -hmm. practice, it's the, you want to become a dancer um, or a musician. Uh, and I think more people play, in, I've argued that more people play musical instruments than draw. Because when you draw, it's finished and you sit there looking at it going, Ey! whereas if you're playing the guitar or ukulele or whatever, and it's off, bling! no, it gone, bling, 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 bling. got it the bad notes are gone. They're not mm -hmm. there left in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, so in the art classes I took in university, one of the most powerful things was you drew, the model would pose and you had a minute. Shh. And then new pose, throw the piece, you know, new piece of paper. Shh. 
new piece of paper every minute. And then you took this, you know, you did 30 quick drawings. You threw them out. You didn't look at them at all. Mm. But your hand was so much better at the end of that. Oh, yes. And if you went back and looked at it, you were bound to find people who were better than you. And you were bound to find people who weren't as good as you and go, well, at least I'm at it. It was useless. It was what this was about was learning to look up here and have your hand be able to trace the outline of the person and go, wow, that looks like my signature. And then after 30 times, I was like, oh, closer. Actually, that yeah. looks like a human. So, um, so I think the perfectionism, uh, it's, I get it. Um, and it's, you want to not let that stop you. You want to, in some ways, envision it's going to be really good. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I don't know if it's arrogant or what to think this is going to be the best book ever, the best blog about New York City ever. Yes. Well, maybe eventually. Um, well, but and it's like the athlete you were talking about is have that vision of where you're trying to get to and, you know, visualize it and then go there. Yeah. Take the and, steps. and I think you, you want to pursue, I mean, for making a living, you do whatever, you know, comes along. And if you find the right mm -hmm. career, one that, and I, I don't want to say that, that it's that your calling necessarily uh, in that direct sense, because if that was the case, who'd be, you know, nobody would be collecting garbage. Nobody would probably be a postman. At my Right. Postman, right. But I, I've talked to, I've talked for a postman. They love their job. The, some of them, some of them hate it. But the ones who do, they love being outdoors. They love walking. They love the meeting people. They love seeing the stuff from around the world. They they are their own boss. They work on their own schedule. There's nobody overseeing them and so on. They're, that works for them. Um, mm -hmm. And somebody else who say, I want to be a nurse. Well, maybe, or a doctor. Yeah. What is it? I love serving and helping people. I love ending pain. Ah, so maybe you could also be a, a caregiver here, maybe a teacher, maybe a, inside of that thing. You could be a house painter who comes in and does beautiful work for people, paints their house, and and leaves them going, my God, this place looks wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. That, and it's like rolling the paint on and so on. There's a pleasure in that. But it's it, the bigger thing is the afterwards. It's the creation. And it could be anything that you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. But we live in an age where everybody wants to be, you know, famous and or in show business or whatever. It's like, yeah. yeah or make millions overnight by yeah. being on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And then the question yeah. is, the question to ask is then, okay, if you had millions, then what would you do? If you never had to work again, what would you do? And look at that. And then maybe that's where you should be putting your, your energy now before you make millions. Yeah. Uh, I, I know people have made millions. They, they're okay, but they have, they crash and burn as often as anyone else. Uh, Absolutely. So, yeah. So with, um, we started the conversation by talking about the, the miniature models that you make yep. um, and following through with that because you love it, you're interested in it you, you've, as, since as a child. So I'm sure there's projects that you dread completing. Mm -hmm. What are some of the steps you personally take to say, okay, I got to get this done. So I'm just going to get it done. So first thing is I just tell Ava, my wife, uh, that I've got to get this done uh, or I report into somebody. I have somebody waiting on it. Um, deadlines really do help. I, I'm not in, at the point in life anymore where I'm willing to stay up till three in the morning to get something done because I understand it's not going to be great work and it's hard on me and so on. Sleep yeah. is, by the way, sleep for ADHD, fundamental, like core, fundamental mm -hmm. stuff. There's an amazing talk, uh, TED talk about sleep. I've forgotten the guy's name. Uh, he's well known. It's not about ADHD, but oh my God, the uh, like breast cancer, you, the list of things. Alzheimer's come, uh, afterwards, oh, yeah. All yeah. sorts of stuff. Memory, yeah. short-term, long-term, you name it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, I've lost a bit. So the, steps the you quite, take so, to finish. Yeah, so steps <laughs> I keep. So, yeah, it's okay. I know. Um, uh, so rewards help. Having, like, I'm going to have some uh, a reward. So for me, it might be I get to take the afternoon off of work on my trains. Or... Mm. Uh, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, it might be a chocolate muffin. My wife is, we're vegan. So I get these amazing chocolate vegan muffins she makes. Hi. So that's my reward for getting this done. Um, so putting stakes in the ground, having to report in, people will say I hate deadlines, but I think, um, uh, I think they really can work. 
if you're working with somebody or for somebody, I also give people permission to just keep nagging me, uh, yes. remind, remind me, check into me. Um, mm -hmm. And if something is way behind, I could contact them. And like I'm preparing some stuff this afternoon because I'm doing a webinar with uh, Attitude Magazine next week. And they want a whole bunch of material, mm -hmm. a PowerPoint and this and that. And uh, this is so much simpler. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, if I was way behind, uh, it's due today, by the way. Uh, I've had five, six weeks to get to it. That's fine. Um, but if I was behind, I would say, um, I'm behind. Uh, thanks for your patience. What do you need first? And oh, I, I love it. So get in contact. Uh, so much of the stress we have is withheld or um, is communications that were just not delivered, that were held in. The thoughts, the racing, what are they going to say? Da, 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 da. You know, if they scream at you and say, I'm never working with you again, okay, then mm -hmm. they aren't, you know, and that's to file away and you can just go, yeah, they're probably, um, and you know what, it didn't obviously matter enough to me mm -hmm. uh, to be, mm -hmm. the, to get this done I, or I couldn't find a way. Um, but this, this challenge of getting started, there are a lot of simple ways to do it. Continuing, I think you ha I need feedback. I need, so sometimes I would just read out what I've done to my wife or to send it off to if I'm working with another writer send it off and just how's this what do you think and back and forth so getting feedback is really good and when I reward myself I try and reward myself with something that is it used to be it still is sometimes potato chips right <laughs> worst stuff for you um <laughs> So, yeah. well, they're vegan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> not if there's sour, yeah, not if there's sour cream and onion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so. Milk solids, damn. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I, I find uh, a reward like the vegan muffins, which are mm -hmm. really good. I mean, it's zucchini and a bunch of other stuff, and it tastes yeah. awesome. Uh, That's awesome. So, yeah, or we're going for a walk or something that is... Um, that allow that I, it means something to me, but it's not like my temptation would be to go play Sudoku for an hour or, and f mm -hmm. I know for a lot of people and for me at one point, I think two video games, I'm talking about when they were like yeah. my, the simple, the simplest yeah. thing, beep, 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 Pac-Man yeah. stuff. But you, it that did something to the brain watching. So I'll go and watch YouTube videos. They kind of shut the brain off. They don't really recharge the way going for a walk would, the way doing a little bit of yoga, a little bit of stretching, doing something that's even just tidying and picking up or cleaning the kitchen. Um, I always, always, oh, thank you for cleaning the kitchen. I, I, I love it because it's done, it's clear, it's simple, and the results are obvious. It's why yes, we do well in jobs. Instant job. gratification, yeah. Yeah, it's why we do well in jobs like firefighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put out the fire, save the people. Got it. Done. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. And, yeah. and it's so simple. And you see people fleeing, a, you know, fleeing an emergency and you see the firemen going in, eyes wide, alert. We're going out in the field and 300 pound men are going to try and hurt you. Cool. Mm -hmm. And they're professional athletes, you know, and most of us would be, are, I mean, I've stood next to 300 pound football players and gone, yeah. I don't want this coming at me. Yeah. Uh, even when I was young and, and, and I, at any age, you don't want this coming. Anyway, yeah. so the, uh, I think it's to figure out what motivates you, what excites you. And sometimes you can, um, you can even, if you're competitive, um, then you can turn it into a game. I'm going to get this done in 20 minutes. Uh -huh. I'm going to time myself and see if I... Like, I'll, and I do this all the time. So my days are often, today is one of them, really planned out. And step by step by step, 10 minutes or 15 minute breaks, or some days it's a half hour, bang, 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 what I have to do. And some of the things will spread out to, you know, mm -hmm. two hours will take up a lot of space on the page. Uh, you know, there's one here where it's just an arrow going down. Um, so I know. But, that makes sense. But having it then, I've got to get it done by this. Here's the time. Um, that I've allotted to it. And I can see physically how much of the time I've allotted, this chunk of time. Um, then the game is, can I do it in less than that? Mm. You know? So the game for me is, can I get it done fast? When I was with the Frantics, the game that I played was always, I'm going to have more scripts to read than anyone else. That was, 
and so that motivated me. The brain woke up. I got to come up with three more. Oh, yeah. Fast, three fast yeah. ideas. And I remember working on a screenplay many years ago. And um, there were five of us and we were struggling. Blah, blah, blah. And the one guy who was actually, his background was a musician, but he, the movie was going to be about him. Never got made. But he said, you realize if somebody said, if somebody said, if you've got something by five o'clock, I'll give you a million dollars. We'd have something by five o'clock. Absolutely. So that, um, and I thought that was like, yeah, okay. And we probably would still want to rewrite it and modify it, but some kind of incentive, um, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes a stressor can be actually a good thing. If you choose the stressor, if you choose the reward, if it's, you know, if you hate going outside uh, and someone says, we're going to go on a hike once you're done. Mm -hmm. Wrong yeah. thing. Whereas if it's, you know, we're going to hike to the model railroad shop. Yeah, that's for you. <laughs> oh, I am. You're right there. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what you said about competitiveness and um you just make me think of something. I don't consider myself competitive with others, but I do consider myself competitive with myself. So I you just totally brought that to my attention because I do that with myself around if I if I have to do something, yeah. oh, how much faster can I get it done and and that motivates me. So thank you for bringing that to my own attention. I was like, <laughs> you're welcome. Self-awareness yeah. happened right there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that muscle you're building there, uh, Ned Hallowell talks about this and others do as well, but that, that self-discipline muscle, that ability to push through, it's, mm -hmm. it's a muscle you build slowly. It's a little bit at a time. And so, you know, like a simple example, and it sounds ridiculous at my age, but to go downstairs, okay, I, I did it. I finished that, uh, done the thing. I'm going to have a muffin. And I get down there and I go, I'm going to wait two minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay I'm just going to wait two minutes. And, then, yeah. and so I start doing something else that needs doing that I don't want to do. At the end of two minutes, it's like, can I wait another two minutes? Yeah, I could. I bet I could. If somebody had a gun to a loved one's head, I could wait probably all day. Um, so you can mentally up the stakes, but you, I find like, I found this with going to the gym for the first time uh, up until whatever it was, March 13th, when everything closed, but going to the gym, um, I actually started to, I loved pushing myself a little and seeing the progress. So over the course of probably a year, I went from being able to, you know, move 50, 40 or 50 pounds to 120 and it was, and I'm 67, so, or 66. So like, that was stunning to me mm -hmm. that my body, even at that age, uh, was able, at this age, was able to do that. So, um, and the patience, the reward came literally from going, okay, I'm going to try, I've done 100. I, and I noted on my phone, I kept track when, on my phone. Last time I did 15 of these at 100, and I did three reps. Let's try 105. <laughs> Yeah, Actually, I can do this. Thing. And you just, you just keep pushing yourself. You don't push yourself, you know, physically to the breaking point because then healing takes time and who wants that? But mm -hmm. I, I do think in anything, just, just pushing yourself a little bit or just setting a doable deadline. And if you chunk it down small enough, I'm going to move it forward this much today. What I find is when I do get into it, um, uh, my energy, like I get, once I start, I, I can become yeah. suddenly in the zone and unstoppable, even with an unpleasant task or something mm -hmm. I'm avoiding, uh, some legal stuff uh, a long time ago, I had to put together a list of people who could verify or testify, I forgot what term they use. And it's like, oh, and that was like, you know, just, uh, there's at least two names. I ended up writing 30 names, I think, or 20 names. And I was in that zone of, it wasn't a fun creative thing, but it was, I got going once I got once you get going there's magic there's phrases especially about for for the brain of people with ADHD I yeah. think it's that is once you go past that initial start and then before you know it um it just genius pours out and you're like oh this is what I was dreading all this long and and you know the time blindness thing I think on uh, affects us too because we think a task could take an hour and then once you get going, it's like 15 minutes, it's done. 
So yeah. we build it bigger than what it is too. Well, and we, and that time blindness you can correct. So I know it takes me between seven and eight minutes to shower. And, shower. Mm -hmm. and how do I know this? Cause I time myself. Um, yeah. uh, it, how long does it take to load the dishwasher? Oh, it's going to be 20 minutes. It's, it's six to eight minutes, a little longer if there's more dishes, if there's d really dirty stuff that needs pre-soaking. Yeah. How long does it take? Like actually time yourself and see how long things yes. take. And, and so say it's uh, loading the dishwasher and you think it's going to take 20 minutes. And if I get it done, I will also sweep the floor and I'll pick up, I'll gather all the remotes totally. and, and arrange yeah. the cushions on the couch. But I don't think I'll get to those two. And six mm -hmm. minutes in, the dishwasher's loaded. You look at your phone, it's still got, I got 14 minutes. Okay, I'm going to sweep. Gee, yeah. That took three and a half minutes. And, it, and a minute and a half of that was trying to find the dustpan. And then the couch and then suddenly you're like i'm i'm a machine totally and you're, yeah i mean i got nine minutes before the show starts i'm gonna vacuum uh yeah. you know or whatever I, that I, and then um the problem is you forget because we have adhd so you will forget that you've had the success or when you do get into that zone in your writing you think okay all i have to do is remember how easy it is and, and what happens when i start I've been doing this for decades. I still end up having to uh, dread and I have to consciously go, you're in the dread stage. You're in the avoiding, you're procrastinating. Mm. Which one of these, what is it that's going on? Is it because you don't care? Is it because you're waiting to hear from so-and-so? Is it because, or is it just, you've done this before and it doesn't interest you? Or is it that it's actually so important, it's intimidating? So all of those things. There that's it is, love that. Yeah, you got to, you have to kind of look inward and we're not good at that. We just yeah. aren't. I, I mean, I don't think anyone is. Most people aren't. And that's, I mean, what is all of Buddhism and, and meditation and, all, and any kind of uh, spiritual pursuit is about mm -hmm. noticing and noticing and noticing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Whether you're Absolutely. Christian or whatever, whatever your faith is, it's that noticing what's going on. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I love it. Thank you. Okay. Thank We're you. Eight minutes. Uh, it's it's nine thirty eight my time. I'm in Mountain Standard Time. Oh, okay. so thank you so much, Rick, for thank you. for this. I could talk to you forever, <laughs> and and this this is so much fun. I am honored that you were my first Instagram live kind of duo going on here. This is thank great. You. That was great. Um, yeah. and you know we have um, a patron. So the Totally ADD website has a Patreon thing, and for Three bu as little as three dollars a month uh, people can join they're getting the previews of all the new videos and we have live chats basically every week for an hour to 90 minutes uh, often awesome. with an expert yeah so uh, definitely worth looking at it's totally add.com and there's mm -hmm. I think it says become a supporter or whatever uh, you become a patron and it's great uh, there's videos there's chat room uh, that's exclusive and discount in the shop there's a whole bunch of stuff I, I'm not good at advertising but uh, it's but it's it's a very cool deal and it's it's been so interesting during the pandemic as i'm sure you must yeah, yeah. hear too um I'm, I'm hearing from people and we've talked about this in some, one of the live chats about are we doing better or worse uh and some people with predominantly inattentive subtype are definitely uh coping better than than the people yes. who are and very then true. and the parents who have kids who are uh the combined subtype who have the hyperactivity Mm -hmm. it's you know it's a challenge it's a challenge yeah so yeah a whole and lot it, of it yeah that makes sense i'm curious well, one last thing uh you you mentioned you're going to be doing a webinar on attitude um for what's attitude the magazine yeah what's the topic on um the topic is dealing with stigma and uh defending i called it defending your diagnosis was the original idea of it um and we actually have in the totally add shop there is a video called uh uh, facing the world is the title and it's really about what do you do because that's what pro uh, propelled me from being a comedy writer actor producer director to being an ADHD advocate mm -hmm. was the pushback and the dismissal the stigma the denial yes. the sneering oh there's nothing wrong with you you're on television yeah so was Charles Manson you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> Of course, I think of these things after driving home. Or, um, it's always something with you. Yeah, well, now we know why. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'm dealing with the, like how to defend your diagnosis, your child's diagnosis, and it'll get into disclosure and who to tell and so on. 
uh, one of my favorite phrases is you're not the idiot whisperer. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And, uh, and the other, the other thing I think we'll get, we'll definitely get into and the video gets into as well. The facing the world video is, is just, it's, it, I think it ends with, you know what, at some point you thought the same stuff and now you know better. Because, you know, when my son was first diagnosed, let me see this list. Yes. He doesn't run around. This is normal. Yeah, normal for me. Normal for members of my family. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody. Anyway. Makes so, a yeah, whole lot be... of sense. Thank you. I'll be thank definitely you. checking that out. And okay. thank you so much, Rick, for all that you do for this community. I, there's tons of videos out there on YouTube. Like going back years ago, I was finding stuff and how yeah. you were out there always talking about it and advocating for us. So thank you so much for- You're welcome. Fighting the good fight for us. Uh, yes. This has been a blast. I hope yeah. we can do it again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy, for having you me. Bet. Thanks everybody for listening and, yeah. uh, and not interrupting, which is astonishing to me. <laughs> awesome, Bye. Rick. Have a great Take day.